Hello, welcome to this new video series. I try to explain this course in a detailed, structured manner. There are multiple videos following this video. Make sure that you take your time to learn and practice. There are code files, materials that are provided in the description. Make sure that you download them while you are practicing these videos. If you have any questions, you can always post them in the comments window. Thank you and good luck with the course. In this session, we are going to get a basic introduction on Agentic AI. What exactly is Agentic AI? What is its connection to generative AI, AI agents, and then Agentic AI systems? And there are some Agentic AI frameworks. And what is the overall learning path? Right now, Agentic AI is the buzzword. We will try to understand a step-by-step -step procedure of how to learn Agentic AI if you really want to master it what all it consists of. So basically it's a overview or an introduction to Agentic AI that will help you to plan further. If you see the history of Agentic AI, right now we are talking about Agentic AI in 2025. Agentic AI is fairly new. If you go to Google Trends and search for when people really started talking about Agentic AI, if you go ahead and search in Google Trends, you will realize that it is a quite recent trend. So if I go to Google Trends, you can also do this, Agentic AI. If I start uh, typing it, explore this. And then if I try to see the worldwide, maybe past five years, if I see, you will be surprised to know that the trend maybe once it hits 2025, that is when we take any trend seriously. Agentic AI trend somewhere around March 2025, that is the time that it got the a kind of, uh, what do you call, fame or people's attention. Even today, like it's keeping on increasing and uh, it's just the starting. Definitely, it's going to really create uh, a lot of job opportunities in a very near future. And there is a very high chance that almost all these systems will move towards Agentic AI. But the point that I'm trying to drive here is it's quite new somewhere around here, somewhere around March 2025. That is the time when Agentic AI really took off and it is not stopping. And there are so many new things that are getting introduced day by day. Even when I'm creating this course, I found it really difficult because I create a set of materials. I feel that there is suddenly a new tool that has outperformed. There is a new concept like MCP that has outperformed or which is very important that need to be included in the course. Even this course, which is a end-to-end -end agentic AI course, but maybe after six months or maybe after one year, maybe in 2026, again, I have to uh, really add some more videos that will add some value or I may have to add some videos depending on the updates that we get in the next six months. But if you see the history of Agentic AI, today we are talking about Agentic AI, but it did not come suddenly out of the blue. So it all started from data gathering until 2000, we were kind of gathering the data and looking at some insights. So if I take you back 25 years, maybe creating basic reports, BI reports, MIS reports, that's what people were doing. That was the most advanced uh, whatever analysis. And then we went on to do predictive modeling making small predictions like whether the customer will buy the product or not, whether the customer will pay back the loan or not, or whether the which product should be sent to which customer, or maybe whether the customer will stay with us or he's going to do the attrition. That means he's going to churn out, he's not going to use our products. So those were some of the basic predictions that we were doing around 2005, 2006. And then 2010, 12, 14, during that time, we started doing advanced predictions like predicting whether a particular mail is spam or non-spam, predicting whether a transaction is fraudulent or non-fraudulent, where we should put the right ad or something. So people started making, maybe using sensor data, can I predict whether there's going to be an accident or not? So we started making some advanced predictions. Those are machine learning applications. Later on, we went on to do something like image analysis, text data analysis. Those were deep learning somewhere around 2018 during that time. And then came generative AI. This term generative AI became famous once chat GPT was there somewhere around 2022 end when people started using chat GPT. From 2023 onwards, this term generative AI started coming into the picture. Until that point, we were doing the analysis. Until that point, we were doing the classification, yes or no. Until that point, we were saying, okay, take one review as input to predict whether it is a positive review or predict whether it is a negative review. So that's what the analysis that we were doing until that point. But now 
in generative ai we are talking about generating the text i'm not really interested in knowing whether it is positive or negative review in generative ai i want to generate a review which is 80% positive maybe 20% negative which kind of gives me a complete in depth uh review of a particular product like the way a human writes or generating text generating images try to find some patterns and try to generate from there so that's what generative ai is and then now the trend is around ai agents what is agentic ai this whole focus is around this one so we'll be focusing a lot on uh, this particular topic we already have courses on this basic reporting predictive modeling machine learning deep learning generative ai so i'm going to give you list of all these courses or the learning path maybe towards the end of the video i will tell you the learning path and i'm also going to give you the resources for you to learn so right now we will focus on agentic ai as i told agentic ai very recently it has started let us see one of the complex agentic ai system let's go to chat gpt now i'm on chat gpt 5 now there is one option agent mode once you keep agent mode on and i'm giving a very detailed prompt here i want to identify early stage micro cap multi bagger stocks in india that have potential to deliver significant 5x to 20x returns in the next 3 to 5 years so basically whatever that i'm investing i want it to grow like anything i want you to find out these multi bag stockers multi bagger stocks assume that i am an investor with high risk appetite so i have given everything and whatever i could give so this is also generated from chat gpt only how to identify multi bagger stocks so first i have asked for a prompt that i can give so i went to chat gpt i asked for a prompt that i can give to an agent it has given me that prompt so these are all the details that i have given and i have kept the agent mode on now what you will see is there will be a desktop that will be set up it is almost like a human agent a person who is working for you somebody who has a lot of investment banking experience the kind of research a person would do now i am not touching my mouse automatically everything is happening on its own and you can see there is one live system that is working in the back end i am not opening this website automatically it is reading all these and it is also trying to tell us what it is reading gathering the data now you see i'll open indian express article to gather the relevant case details this will allow me to do this so it is trying to give us some of the details whatever you see near this i'll open view source from indian express page so it is getting into multiple systems and trying to tell us the details of what is the overall process that it is trying to follow so multiple websites have been opened and multiple stocks have been uh, analyzed finally we are getting details of these micro cap stocks that we may see around 3x to 20x results in the next 3 to 5 years so this process will take some time what i'll do is i'll take you back to our presentation maybe after 10 to 15 minutes it will give us the detail but i have already done this exercise once what you will realize is it has gone through all those details and then it has uh, taken some time it has taken some time and uh, it will try to give me the final list of uh, stocks it has uh, finally it has given me the details that uh, these are the list of stocks maybe after 10 to 15 minutes we will come back here i'll show you uh, what is the result that we may get so that is one of the ai agent example or agentic ai system so that is one of the system where you have just given a very detailed prompt everything is taken care in the back end on its own all that i did was i have written a detailed uh, prompt and everything is happening on its own i will try to give this prompt in the ppt or in our document you can also play around with this prompt you can also give it or you can generate the prompt and you can play around with chat gpt agent mode let me give you one more example we will go back to chat gpt but this time we will open something else what we want to do is i want to create a software and i'm not a software programmer so write end to end code end to end code for building an app maybe that can help people to learn spanish language 
using a simple game. So I want to gamify this whole learning of a different language. And then if I simply say that, it will start building an app. It is thinking, ChatGPT5 is thinking for a better answer. It's not just generating the answer. It will write the code for me. Let's give it time. So microcroth strategy, it is working. Okay. In the backend stock strategy. And now it is trying to get some offline data sets. Not only that, it is going to give me the code. I'm just waiting for it to open the code. It is finalizing the app designs. You see the kind of autonomous decisions this particular app is taking. We are talking about chat GPT-5 that was released maybe 10 days back. This is in August. Thought for 43 seconds. And then it is giving me the code, end-to-end -end code, complete code. This is also known as vibe coding. What is vibe coding? You give the prompt and the code will be given by an AI agent like this. And then again, if you want to make any changes, you give the prompt. Basically, by giving the prompt, like the way you talk to a software engineer, you will be talking to an AI agent, which will give you the code. So we will run the code and see the front end as well. As you can see, our AI agent kept on writing the code. It is still writing the code. You can see the number of lines that have been generated. It is still writing the code. Let us give it some more time. And then finally, we will try to run the code. There you go, the final message. I built you a complete single file React app, Spanish language game. It has all these things. It has given the details. Let's run this code. So on the left hand side, you have your uh, prompting window. On the right hand side, you have the game. Now this is known as wipe coding, whatever changes that you want to make. Let us suppose this is Spanish mini game. If I say add a logo for this app and then it will start writing the code. So instead of writing the code for adding a logo, you have written the prompt that will generate the code that will indeed add a logo in this whole app. Now, this is known as wipe coding. So we are going to talk about it a little more later on. As of now, you can see learn, play, review settings. Most of them are working perfectly. Hola, you can say speak, hola, and then you will say really, hello. And then uh, maybe probably there's one more card that will be played. Since we have asked for this question, add a logo for this app. I have added a logo, it is saying. So let me stop this and then rerun this code. Probably I may expect a logo. Sometimes it may break also. Then if it breaks, I would say try to rerun. It is breaking. So what I'm trying to say here is we have a basic app by spending a lot of time with it, acting as if you are a manager. And this particular chat GPT is the agent or maybe a lot of agents that are working in the backend to give you this particular code file front end as well as a backend. You can almost achieve this whole app all by yourself. Now, this is one of the example of some of the most advanced agents. This is one of the example and we are just getting started. There are so many such powerful agents that are created nowadays. Until now, whatever I have shown, those are the examples of some of the advanced agentic AI systems. But before getting there, first, let's get some clarity on these three terms. People call it as one of them is Gen AI. So the term that we hear is Gen AI. And then after Gen AI, maybe at the end of it, we talk about something called AI agents. But after that, this has emerged agentic AI system. So when people say Gen AI, when people say AI agent, and then agentic AI system, there are kind of subtle differences. There are some, uh, there is some comparison. There are some similar points, but there is subtle difference between these three. When somebody says Gen AI, it means that you give an input to a large language model, any large language model like ChatGPT or Gemini. You give input. Let's say my input is how to improve focus and utilize time effectively. Give me the answer in 10 bullet points or bullet points. So this input prompt that you give, then you will get the output that is generated. From ChatGPT, I got this output. Here is the direct bullet point list that you can use. You set priority, break the task down, time box work or something like that. It has given me the output. So Gen AI means it takes the input, it gives you the output, a generated output, but it cannot do any work. So Gen AI, 
LLMs that generate the content. Sometimes here I have generated text. Similarly, you can generate images. If you give an input prompt that give me an image of sunset near the beach, in the background there is a hill and there are two horses running on that beach, then you may get that image or you can generate the code as well. It generates the output, it takes the input and gives you the output. That is what generative AI is and there are several applications of generative AI. But this generative AI or mostly in generative AI, the most powerful one is large language model. A large language model is the one that is generating this output. But standalone large language model, it could not do mathematics. It could not search the internet. Let us suppose there is an event that has happened recently. If you ask the large language model, it may not give the right answer. I have asked the question, who is the current president of India? Since this large language model was trained with old data and it cannot do internet search, it is giving me a wrong answer that Ramnath Kovin, who is not the current president of India. If I ask the large language model, who is the IPL winner of 2025, uh, a lot of you must be knowing that RCB is the winner of IPL 2025. It is saying it is impossible to predict the winner of IPL 2025 because it was trained until maybe 2022 or 2023 data. And it is trying to tell us that how can I predict the next two years event since it doesn't have the internet search capability. Now, if you just take a large language model in Gen AI, it can generate the output. If you ask it to generate a poem, if you ask it to give you the answer like this, it will do. But if it has to access the internet, it cannot do it. Then you add something called tools. That is where AI agents come into the picture. So AI agents are like softwares acting like humans. So they will have small thought. They will do some action. They will do some observation. That means you will have LLM that will work like a brain. Large language model will give some instruction. Okay, somebody has asked a question about who is the IPL winner for 2025. Then what LLM tells is instead of telling I do not know the answer, it will try to act. Okay, I don't have the answer. Maybe I have to search in tools. Now, if one of the tool is internet search engine, if we give that capability, then we will be able to get the answer. So agents mimic the same process, the way that humans think, okay, if I don't have the answer with me right now, here I may have to search in a tool. So what are agents? Agents are software programs that interact with real world, external events, current data, beyond the LLM trained data. So large language models, whatever they have been trained, they can only generate the output. But beyond that, if you want to combine tools, then you will have an AI agent. We have talked about AI agents already in our Gen AI course right at the end. You can go there and get into the in-depth of it. Otherwise, later on, maybe after half an hour, I'm going to give you in-depth what are AI agents. We are going to build a couple of AI agents. So what is AI agent? In simple terms, you have LLM and you give few more tools to it. That is known as AI agent. It does one particular job. Continue with the next video in the playlist. We are covering everything step by step. If you have any questions or the comments, please post them in the comments window below.